Hello, my name is Edmond Jamna, and on behalf of DW Consult, I want to welcome you to Tutorials on the Go. Our zeal here is to help transition people with zero, struggling, or shaky base in accounting to an expert position and to a place of confidence. It is also a platform to assist in the smooth studying of the ACC and ICA professional qualifications, as well as for any tertiary accounting discipline. All that is required of you is to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell as well to be part of the program. Tutorials on the Go. Bringing accounting to heart. Now, to this episode's lecture. And in special, IAS 33. The objective is to prescribe principles for determining and presenting earnings per share amount to improve performance comparisons between different entities in the same reporting period and between different reporting periods for the same entity. Now, the scope of IAS 33 applies to entities whose securities are publicly traded or that they are in the process of issuing securities to the public. Other entities that choose to present any special information must also comply with the standard. Any special. Now this is a company's net profit divided by the number of ordinary shares it has outstanding. Now the any special indicates how much money a company makes for each share of its stock and it's a widely used metrics for estimating corporate value. A higher value earnings per share indicates greater value because investors will pay more for a company's shares if they think the company has high profit relative to its share. Ordinary share. This represents a fraction of ownership in the entity that issues it. The ordinary shareholder gets a vote on company's major decisions decided at its shareholders meeting. Potential ordinary shares. This is a financial instrument or other contract that may entitle its holder to ordinary shares. For examples could be convertible debt convertible preference shares, share warrants, share options, share rights, employee stock, purchase plans, contractual right to purchase shares. Let's now move on to discuss basic earnings per share. This is a company's net profit divided by only the number of ordinary shares it has outstanding. So it tells investors how much of a firm's net income was allotted to each share of ordinary share or common stock. So businesses with simple capital structures where only common stock or ordinary shares has been issued need only to release this ratio to reveal the profitability. Okay. So the formula for basic earnings per share will be net profit less preferred dividend, in other words, the dividend paid to preference shareholders, all divided by weighted average number of shares. So what is the weighted average number of shares? So this reflects the period to which the shares have been existent in the reporting period of the business. It is essential when there are changes in the outstanding shares. So Continuing on the weighted average number of shares, we have a full price issue. So this is where a share has been issued at its market value. When we come to bonus issue, we assume that the bonus was issued at the beginning of the year and that the bonus issue has been with the business for the entire accounting period. Therefore, we don't have to prorate it. However, when we come to right issue, we will assume that the shares is a mix of bonus and full price shares. So for the bonus element, as explained earlier, we'll have to assume that they have been in issue and therefore adjust the comparative. That is either the prior year or a rival in the industry. Now let's test our understanding. Kit has its year end on 31st December each year. So on 1st January 2020, Kit has 6 million ordinary shares in issue. So profit for the year to 31st December 2020 were $14.4 million. So we have to calculate the basic earnings per share with the following assumption. First, the share capital has not changed during the year. Secondly, an issue of 1 million new shares at full market price on 1st August 2020. Thirdly, a 1 for 2 bonus issue occurring on 1st November 2020. And lastly, a 1 for 3 right issue 1st July 2020 held at $3. Now, the price of a share immediately before the right issue was $4. So, the formula, as we have already alluded to, is net profit less preference dividend divided by a weighted average number of shares. So the first assumption where there was no issue of shares during the year, the earnings per share will be $14.4 million, which is the net profit. There's no dividend paid to preference shareholders, so that's zero. We divide it by the existing shares, which is $6 million, giving us an earnings per share of $2.40. Okay. When we come to the next assumption where an additional $1 million worth of shares were issued on 1st August, what we do is that we have to prorate the shares. The first one from the period of 1st January 2020 to 31st July, which is seven months, there were 6 million worth of shares in the business. So we prorate that to be 6 million times 7 over 12. 
Now for the rest of the five months, there were seven million in play. Original six million plus the additional one million. So the weighted average number of shares will be six point five million. So the earnings per share will give us two dollars twenty two cents. Okay. Now when we come to the third assumption, where a bonus issue was made. The bonus issue was one for two, and the total value of the shares existing was six million. So the bonus will be three million. So it will be literally nine million. Okay, the six million for the whole of the year, then the bonus also for the whole of the year. So the earnings per share, which will be fourteen point four million dollars divided by nine million shares, giving us one dollar sixty cents. So when we come to the last assumption, we have to calculate the value of the existing six million shares at the market price before the rights issue was done. So that will be six million times four dollars, which will give twenty-four million dollars. Now the right issue is one for three. So when we divide the six million by three, we'll get two million dollars. And the price was three dollars, giving six million dollars. So the existing shares plus the right issue, which is eight million shares, has a value of thirty million dollars. So we have something we call the theoretical exercise price, which is the inherent value of the share. So that was going to be the value of the shares divided by the total number of shares. So the thirty million divided by eight million will give three point seven five dollar per the right share. After that, we will now have to estimate the number of right issue at the theoretical exercise price. So that will be the value of the right issue divided by the theoretical exercise price. So the actual number of shares from S one million six hundred thousand shares. So the difference will be the bonus issue, meaning the bonus issue is now four hundred thousand. We are now going to work out the weighted average number of shares. So we start with the ordinary shares that was existing at the beginning of the year, which is six million, fully weighted. The bonus issue of four hundred thousand will also be fully weighted. And when we come to the right issue, the number of shares was one point six million. Then it was issued on first July, meaning it has to be prorated or weighted for six months, giving eight hundred thousand. So the weighted average number of shares for the fourth assumption is 7.2 million. If you make a mistake and you pick the 2 million number of shares from the right issue and prorate it by 6, you realize they are going to get 1 million added to the 6 million and get 7 million, which will render your workings wrong. Now that we are done with the basic earnings per share, let's move to the diluted earnings per share. So when we say a share is diluted, it means that the earnings per share has been reduced or the loss per share has been increased with the assumption that potential ordinary shares has been what exercised so meaning convertible instruments have been converted options or warrants have been exercised or that ordinary shares are issued upon the satisfaction of specified conditions so when we say a share is diluted it means that there have been an introduction of more shares which has rendered the existing shareholders lose the proportion of their ownership in the business okay so with the earlier ones, the bonus shares and the right shares are issued to the shareholders. Okay, so it doesn't result in losing their proportion. So for full price issue, the earnings should be adjusted by adding back any cost that will not be incurred once the dilutive instrument has been exercised. Okay, so this will include the post-tax interest saved on convertible debts. More on diluted earnings per share. So for convertible instruments, we'll have to add the maximum number of shares to be issued in the future. So for options, we add the number of effectively free shares to be issued when the options are exercised. Okay, so let's test our understanding. So Ronaldo Limited has calculated the basic earnings per share based on an actual shares of 100 million and earnings of $500 million for the year ended 31st December. So for convertible debentures, on 31st December 2020, Ronaldo had an issue $10 million of 5% convertible loan stock. So the loan stock is convertible at the following dates with the following terms. On 31st December 2021, 125 shares for every $100 of loan stock. On 31st December 2022, 120 shares for every $100 of loan stock. So the tax rate is 20%. For share options, Ronaldo also granted 100 million options at the same rate. The option price is $2.5, but the average fair value of a share price is $4. So we have to calculate the fully diluted earnings per share for the year to 31st December 2020. For the solution, the first one, which is the convertible bond, 500 million which is in existence will be there. 
plus the 400,000, the convertible bond attracts an interest of 5%. But because we are assuming that it is converted into shares, we do not have to pay that money again. It becomes a savings. Now, 5% of the 10 million is $500,000. And this will increase the revenue or the profit for the business, which will attract 20%. So the net savings will be 400000 Now, when we come to the denominator, for the question was said that for every $100 of the convertible bond, 125 shares will be issued. So the value of the convertible is $10 million. So when you divide by the 100 and multiply by 25, you're going to get 12.5 million shares issued for the convertible. So the diluted earnings per share is going to be 500 million plus 400,000 all divided by 100 million shares plus 12.5 million shares so the diluted earnings per share will be $4.45 when we come to the options there's not going to be any savings because options is that you have a valuable employee in your office and you want to tie the person down so you tell the person that if you stay for five years you're going to let the person hold a certain number of shares so when you come to the bottom the 100 million is already in existence plus the shares that is going to be an issue so here how to determine their converted shares will be the difference between the fair value and the option price divided by the fair value so when that is done we multiply by the 100 million the number of shares that is going to arrive at a three million seven hundred fifty thousand shares so the earnings per share for that one will be 500 million divided by the 100 million plus 3.750 thousand shares which will lead to four dollars 82 cents when we come to the fully diluted earnings per share it's going to give us an amount of four dollars 45 cents so when we look at the workings down here so for the ordinary share which was already an issue the earnings or the net profit was 500 million dollars the number of shares in existence was 100 million then there was a five percent convertible into shares the value end of four hundred thousand dollars and it led to the number of shares of 12 0.5 million shares when we come to the share option there was no savings so it's zero but there was three million seven hundred fifty thousand so when you sum them the total earnings will be five hundred million four hundred thousand and the total number of shares will be one hundred and twelve million five hundred thousand so folks this is where we draw out the curtains on our lecture if you have any comments or feedback for us do well to drop them in the comment section below and it will be timely and adequately addressed whilst at that Kindly subscribe and turn on all notifications to stay abreast with our uploads. Also, follow us on our various social media handles as captured on the screen. So we come to you by way of another episode of Tutorials on the Go. Take care of yourself and stay blessed. Poker, poker.